Now, when this Melvin Gordon news dropped that the Ravens were in discussion with him for a potential contract, uh, a lot of different Ravens fans had a lot of differing opinions uh, when it came to the possibility of signing one Melvin Gordon. Um, and some of those were, is it really worth it to sign him to a deal right now? Um, should they just draft a running back instead, since that would be a much cheaper option, uh, and a, a young running back could come in and give you that same amount of production uh, that Melvin Gordon could, and possibly not even have the fumbling issues that Melvin Gordon has? Uh, should they be allocating this money somewhere else, whether it be offense or defense? Uh, and Melvin Gordon, speaking of the fumbling issues, he got fumbling issues. Do you really want to bring that to the team? Or do you have somebody already on the team that can give you his output? Um, and there's been uh, quite a few more discussions when it's come to Melvin Gordon. Uh, but there's one thing that uh, would scare me, uh, and that would be my biggest worry and my biggest fear uh, if the Ravens were to sign Melvin Gordon. Um, and it's really none of those things that were previously talked about. I remember growing up when you were in school, maybe, and, and some of you may have kids that are in school that are learning this concept right now. And that concept is that sharing is caring. Uh, kids are taught that it's great to share. And if you share with somebody, then you care about somebody. Um, and they are taught that from infancy. Sharing is caring. It's in so many different songs and lullabies and whatnot. Um, but I think the Ravens, when it comes to them having a plethora of quality running backs, which, again, could be a good situation, but at the same time, in Ravensville, um, I would be scared that it would turn into the situation from 2020. We had Mark Ingram. We had J.K. Dobbins. We had Gus Edwards. And there would be so many games where Gus Edwards was hot and he was rolling. And then the Ravens were like, oh, okay, JK, you get a piece. Oh, no, okay, Mark Ingram, you get a piece too. Then there would be other games where JK was hot and the same thing would happen. And since they had three quality running backs on a the roster, they kept trying to force feed everybody all the time. And it just was not working. It was taken away from the productivity of the guy who was hot. It was taken away from his game and it was taken away from the hot hand. And instead of the Ravens sticking with the hot hand, rolling with the hot hand, they made it an overly complicated situation that they really didn't have to. But since they wanted to keep everybody happy and they know that sharing is caring, they force fed. They force fed and that slowed the running game down. And finally, it took the Ravens a little while. But toward the end of the season, they started having Mark Ingram inactive for games. Uh, and then the running game, it really picked up a whole lot. With Melvin Ingram, I am worried that if, if the Ravens do sign him, which, again, in my opinion, it would not be a bad signing. But I completely understand the people who could be against it where they could be like, oh, we could just draft the running back. I could get that. You could draft the running back in the later rounds. You could bring in an undrafted rookie free agent running back. You got you could, you could have a lot of options at the running back position. You you really do. Um, but so I, I so I understand where they're coming from. But my biggest fear with them potentially signing Melvin G Gordon. I think I've been saying Melvin Ingram this whole time. Uh, but <laughs> my uh, my my potential biggest fear with them signing him is that they do that same thing that they did with the three running backs back in 2020 and that they really uh, share the wealth and they really sacrifice the hot hand in order to keep everybody happy. Um, so that would just, it, it wouldn't be a good move for the Ravens if they went about it like that. Now I did hear, I don't know if this has any validity and I don't know if it's true, but I heard that he left the Broncos because he wanted to be a starter somewhere. He wanted more of an opportunity. Now, if that is the case, that's something else that would worry me. Because if, if that is true, that he's leaving the Broncos for more of an opportunity, because, of course, you know, they got Javante Williams, the guy that dragged Marlon Humphrey into next season. Uh, but he, if he's coming to the Ravens and he's looking for more of an opportunity, and, you know, the Ravens like, they may just promise it to him. What would that mean for the rest of the running backs? And it's just something that is very worrisome. Um, something else that also worries me uh, is, I'm, I know my guy Nitra brought it out in the last video where we talked about Melvin Gordon, 
is that this could be saying that maybe one of their running backs is not as far along as they had hoped. Uh, maybe somebody's progress and their rehab from their injury, maybe things are not going as good as they once thought it was. Um, so hopefully that's not the case. But again, you never know. So stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. Um, and another thing. And now this is just me thinking about possibilities because never say never because you never know. And I know both running backs coming back from injury makes the situation uh, that much trickier. Um, but I don't know, man. Uh, one more possibility, even though, again, it's not very likely in my opinion, but you never know. I was wondering if it's possible that the Ravens may be thinking about trading somebody. Because the timing, man, the, the thing that's throwing me off, it, and that's what all the possibilities we discussed of what this move could possibly mean, the timing is what, what throws me off the most. Now, again, I'm not, I wouldn't be mad at the move um, because, again, it, it would be a, a quality running back that you would be getting. Um, even though, yeah, you could get that in a draft or undrafted or whatnot. Remember, shout out to Gus Edwards, you. Um, but it's the timing. The fact that it's happening now. It's happening before the draft. Or it could be happening before the draft. It could be happening before that sort of third wave of free agency. It could be happening when before cap cuts. You know, Ravens love them cap cuts. So the fact that they would potentially be doing this like relatively soon. That speaks volumes and it makes you wonder like, huh, why are they doing this now? What's going on? So it is what it is. Um, we're going to see. I'm sure we'll have plenty of those questions answered. Some we won't have answered until the signing as far as the, the money that the signing is for, because I know that's going to be a big question. If Melvin Gordon does sign with the Ravens, how much money are they going to allocate to uh, another running back? And potentially a, a third running back. Or are they going to do a 1A, 1B, 1C type of thing? You never know with the Ravens in the run game. So some positives, though. I'm um, Again, he is a quality guy. But he could alle alleviate pressure off of one Lamar Jackson. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson is such a huge, probably the biggest part of the Ravens run game. It's the biggest part of the Ravens run game. He's been their leading rusher. Um, did he lead? The, actually, did he lead him in 2019? No, Mark Ingram led him in 2019. I think Mark Ingram had 1,100 yards and Lamar had 1,000 some. Or was it flipped around? I don't even remember. But he's been one of their leading rushers, if not the leading rusher, ever since he stepped on the scene. And for the Ravens' run game, um, like that's cool, but it's time to get more out of the backs. It's time to get more out of the backs. The design QB runs, let's tone those way down. Lamar's still going to do his thing. He's still going to do his thing. And on passing plays, there'll be some passing plays where ain't nothing happening. Then he just takes off. Okay, cool. No problem. No problem. Don't go create your own. But the design run, QB runs, let's tone it way down. And let's use those weapons. Remember, the responsibility of this team this year should be to make everybody's job easier easier everybody players coaches everybody's job easier it's funny because i i did see a tweet that was going around ravens twitter that says man these ravens they're not building for lamar jackson they building for greg roman i was like "Ooh, that is something right there but at the same time we and something that i've been saying i, I want greg roman to have no excuses this year none zero None. I, I want everybody to have no excuses. So hopefully health can be in the Ravens' favor, um, but also personnel too. Personnel. Okay, you're going to give Greg Roman everything he needs? Okay, but make sure you give Lamar everything that he deserves because I don't think the Ravens have done that yet. They still got time to. They still got opportunity to. And we're going to wait on them to do it. We hope they do it. But um, let's uh, make sure that Lamar gets his too. Because remember, Ravens, Sharing is caring.